Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a two case break of 2022-23 Bowman University Best Basketball. It's a random letter break. We're gonna go by the first letter of their first name, 16 a box is total, all card ship. Pretty easy if you get randomized the letter V, you're gonna get any and all of Victor Wembanyamas that we happen to pull uh, in these next two cases. There are the rest of the letters right there. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. Congrats again to the people who won their spots in the fillers. There's all the letters, and let's roll it. Let's randomize names and letters. Snake eyes, two times, easy. One and two. Snake eyes, two times for the letters. One and two. Got the LN combo down to T. All right, Nathan with LN, John with R, Nathan with V. Uh, Bartholomew with B, Travis, EG, and you have J. Nathan, you have WZ plus all other letters that's not on the list. John with M, Adam with K, John with D, S, H, and C. Eric with P, F, John with A, and Simon with T. Let's alphabetize by letter. And we are gonna pause the video just for a little bit. When we come back, uh, we might have some trades and letters. I'm gonna go run and grab the cases as well. So stick around, we'll see you on the other side. All right, welcome back everybody. No deals were done. Although John did try to offer all of his letters for the letter V, Nathan was, in, was not in the chat. I'm not entirely sure if Nathan would have done that anyway, but we'll never know unless he pops into the chat. Let's just see. All right. It's a dual case break, so 16 boxes total, eight in each case. So, Kick back, relax, settle in, get this break done. And uh, we'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break as well. Well, Summer League is over, ladies and gentlemen, and the Cavs, Cleveland Cavaliers, won the Summer League for whatever that's worth. I think Isaiah Mobley winning player of the game there, MVP. Evan's brother, Isaiah Mobley. Be an interesting team next year. I guess the kind of the big player movement storylines remaining, James Harden. Where, where does he go? Or does he go anywhere? And I guess Damian Lillard. Where, where does he end up? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Sixers GM Daryl Morey was saying the other day, the Harden trade has to keep the Sixers in the title mix. They're just not going to trade him for for a basket of basketballs. Nets and the Cavs apparently are to play a regular season game in Paris. All right, first autograph is Hansel Emmanuel for the letter H. That's going to be for John. 19 out of 99. Got Derek Lively die cut. 
And a Jordan Hawkins, Aqua Lava to 199 for the letter J. That'll be for Travis. So let's see what these Derek with these die cuts too. We got a leaky black. So these, uh, this is the speckle parallel, which are not numbered. The mini diamonds, which look pretty similar, are numbered. Here is PJ Hall going to Eric and the letter P. Trace Walker, oh, and Victor Wimbanyama, first base card there. Julian Phillips for the letter J. That'll be for Travis. That's to 150. And first of potentially many victors for Nathan, who got randomized the letter V with a spot he won in the filler. And of course, all cards will ship. That's box one. What does everyone think about the uh, the in tournament, the in season tournament? What are they What are they calling it? The corner NBA.com. They're calling it the in season tournament. <laughs> So there's an in-season tournament 101 page here on NBA.com. Summary. The inaugural in-season tournament will tip off. I'm sure there'll be a sponsor for it at some point. It'll be like the, the Kia, the MB, the Kia in-season tournament will tip off on Friday, November 3rd and culminate with the championship on Saturday, December 9th. So it's about a month. The semifinals will be December 7th, Thursday, December 7th. Championship game will take place at T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. The in-season tournament will consist of two stages, group play and knockout rounds. It's very similar to like a, like a Champions League in soccer kind of format, or World Cup format. All 30 teams have been randomly drawn into groups of five within their conference based on win-loss records from the 2022-23 season. And beginning November 3rd and counting through Thursday, Tuesday, November 28th, each team will play four designated group play games on, quote, tournament nights. One game against each opponent in its group with two games at home and two on the road. So they're still regular season games. They're not additional games. But certain games will just be designated as these tournament games. Then eight teams will advance to the knockout rounds. The team with the best standing in group play games, each of the six groups and two wild cards, teams from each group. And then I guess those are rescheduled then? Those are new games? That I don't know. I guess we'll find out. The team with the best standing in the group play games in each of the six and two wild cards and the best record in group play games that finished second to its group, blah, blah, blah. Knockouts will be single elimination games in the quarterfinals. Played in NBA team markets on Monday and Tuesday. Semifinals and championships. Qualifying teams will complete, compete for a prize pool and the new in-season tournament trophy, the NBA Cup. Oh, all 67 games across both stages of the in-season tournament will count towards the regular season standings except the championship. Each team will continue to play 82 regular season games including those that are part of the group player knockout, blah, 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 blah. TV schedule announced in August. Deron Holmes going to John in the letter D. I think it's interesting. I feel like November, ooh, this is interesting. Does that look like a super there? There's Anthony Black. And we got a Bowman Masterpieces insert. Super, one of one. 
And that is Nick Smith Jr. Nathan with the LN combo. Nice. Nathan, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Strong. <clears throat> The other autograph is Trace Jackson Davis. Scott's wondering, would this ultimately make schedules more difficult for good teams? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you're a good team, you'll be in a, a group that plays not so good teams. Not sure how exactly the, uh, the, the, the draw works. <clears throat> Somehow it's based on win-loss records though. Another victor for Nathan. That's the mini diamond right there. That's a 299. Otega Oa will go to letter O. Not on the list, so that'll go to the all other letters for Nathan. Caitlin Clark, refractor. Goes to John and the letter C. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's Malik Renault for the letter M, that'll be for John. To 150. Now the, uh, the NBA Cup itself for now, to some may just seem kind of pointless. They're like, so it's just a random tournament? And then, I think it's good, it keeps interest in sort of the, November, December is sort of a weird time for NBA, right? People aren't really, people are really, that's deep into the NFL season. And so I feel like people really aren't paying too close attention to the NBA, but maybe this, this gives people an excuse to tune into some of these games that might have a little extra juice to it. Um, there's some cash prizes for the, for the players that win the NBA Cup. And I think in the future, this is all TBD, but in the future, I, there's been some discussions that I've read. There's been dis discussions that maybe years down the road, if, especially if this tournament looks like it's being it's successful, could that have draft implications? Draft pick implications? Could that have? Could there be a playoff spot reserved for a team that wins the NBA Cup? Even larger cash, I don't know. So there, there are some, some interesting, uh, I don't know, maybe you win the NBA Cup, you get, you get more ping pong balls in the, uh, you know, maybe you get some extra spots on random.org when they do, when they figure out the draft lottery. Obviously, they're, they're trying to do what soccer's been doing, those in-season cup tournaments. <clears throat> there is Jalen Bridges. That'll be for Travis in the letter J, that's to 150. If I were to radically change the NBA, I would make it like a English Premier League schedule. There's Arthur Kaluma, 90 out of 99, green mini diamonds. I would have every team play each other home and away, which would ultimately make it a, I don't know, someone do the math on that, but. I would make it a 50, no, 
30, 20. Someone can do the math on that, right? If each team played each other home and away. Slices the, the number of regular season games down, but considerably. If you feel like you would avoid any, any sort of, uh, sort of load management, just because there's so far fewer games, and then, you know, maybe you increase playoff games or something like that. People want to see NBA playoffs anyway. And then that might be leave more room open for things like uh, an expanded in-season cup competition or something like that. It's Marcus Sasser to 75. You know, there could be a comp competition that includes all 30 teams in the NBA and then you play for something and then maybe the bottom 10 teams will have another cup competition that'll be a fight for draft picks or something like that. The winner of that tournament will, will get the number one pick. Or maybe a playoff, a play-in spot or something like that. Chance of the playoffs. Which would be kind of interesting. But with the TV money involved, they'll never do. And the in-game, the game day revenue owners, they're not going to give up games. It would never happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tournament detail section in this in-season tournament. Section two... Subsection A, group play draw. To determine each opponent's team's opponents in the group play, the 15 teams in each conference are divided into three groups of five teams via a random drawing. Maybe they use random.org. The groups are below. West, group A, Grizzlies, Suns, Lakers, Jazz, Portland, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Skip through that. Blah, 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 blah. So I guess before the drawing, each team was placed into a pot based on its record from the prior regular season. In each conference, one team from each pot was randomly selected into each of the three groups in that conference. Pot one, the team of the three best prior season records in a conference. Pot two, the team of the fourth through sixth best prior season records, so on and so forth, to pot five the teams with the 13th through 15th best records in the prior seasons. So group play. Oh, interesting. So they're kind of branding it, interestingly. Like Champions League. Group play. Tournament nights will take place every Tuesday and Friday. That's some decent branding. So like Tuesday and Friday, those are probably TNT games and ESPN games. They'll be like, hey, this is a tournament night. But it's not, it's not too random. Well, I guess with the exception of Election Day on Tuesday, November 7th. So that's interesting. There's Brandon Murray uh, for Bart, letter B. Mini diamond right there, Dewan Harris Jr. for John in the letter D. That's the 299, and the Caitlin Clark for John in the letter C. Let's see if we can find some color, some parallels. And we got a Kiki Rice, UCLA's Kiki Rice, going to letter K. Adam K with the letter K. First letter, first name. We got another UCLA player right here. Die cut, Amari Bailey with the letter A, John. We got Chris Murray. And we're halfway through the first case. Oh, 
The team will play each of the four other teams in its group in one group play game. A uh, team's run record run interconference games, blah, blah, blah. And there's tiebreakers and head to heads and this and that. Blah. And then teams will advance into the knockout rounds. And even knockout games will be considered. So I guess they're leaving space open for these games early on and then they re reschedule from there. It would be interesting to see how they handle all that. But the knockout stages will consist of single elimination games that count as regular season games for the eight teams that advance from group play. Only the championship game does not count as a regular season game and regular season stats won't apply either. Subject to travel constraints. No team will play more than one of its two games cross conference, blah, 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 blah. The other 20 games will be scheduled within conference featuring teams that are otherwise scheduled to play each other over three times over the course of the season whenever possible. And then the four teams that lose in the quarterfinals will each play a regular season game on Friday, December 8th against the opponent in their same conference. They're trying to make up for, for all those games. I mean, I don't know, hopefully someone at the NBA office has a good spreadsheet to keep track of all this scheduling stuff. Prize and league honors for the 2023-24 season. The in-season tournament prize pool will be allocated to the players on the teams that participate in the knockout rounds, with allocations increasing depending on how far the team progresses. And then there'll be an MVP for the competition and an all-tournament team. There you go, the the, uh, the deets of the in-season tournament. And we've got a Khalif battle going to Adam in the letter K. We've got Oscar die cut. Got mini diamonds right here to race Walker to 299 for Travis. We got a Brandon Miller refractor for Bartholomew letter B. And we got a Keyshawn Bartholomew for Adam in the letter K. I guess some try to trade, couldn't trade mojo there. 98 out of 99. Got some red coming up. Here's a victor. And that's going to be Tiger Campbell. Four out of ten. Red parallel for Simon in the letter T. Newsday for NBA.com. They're already talking about 12 potential free agents target in 2024. Which actually will be quite interesting. Uh, both Anthony Davis and LeBron James for my Lakers could be free agents. 
Uh, LeBron has a player option. And Anthony Davis also has an early termination option. And Bronny will be draft eligible next year. He's playing here, staying here in LA, playing at USC. We'll see how he does. Jalen Brown, also a free agent. Pascal Siakam, Ojiano Obi, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, Nick Claxton, DeMar DeRozan, Clay Thompson, Buddy Heald, Miles Bridges, Caleb Martin are some of your top 20, 2024 free agents. How badly? Because I think he does want to. I think LeBron definitely wants to uh, play with his son at some point. And he'll probably opt out. I guess we'll see how his son does throughout the course of the season. But there's Mattis Bazelis. He's supposed to be. One of the higher end picks in next year's NBA draft. That's going to go to John and the letter M. Marcus Sasser for the letter M. We got Demar Langford, mini diamonds, two ninety nine. We got an R.J. Davis autograph for John, the letter R, Last Bot Mojo. And we got a Judah Mintz for the letter J. Speaking of opt out, Dallas Keuchel has an opt out for Friday if the Twins don't give him a roster spot. Talk about. Irrelevant news. We're talking about relevant players, Rex. And he, Dallas Keuchel did have a run for a number of seasons there. Still irrelevant. He was going to be one of the next big pitchers, and it's just that he didn't work out. Yeah, it happens. Some players work out, some players don't, Rex. But I don't know. Who cares about Dallas Keuchel? Even throwing a, has he thrown a pitch for the Twins this year? Can't believe we're gonna waste time on Dallas Keuchel right now. No, he's he's minor league deal maybe. Has he thrown a pitch for the Twins? He hasn't. I. Why would he? Why would he opt out? If the Twins don't give him a roster spot, they're not. <laughs> Why would he opt out, though? Is, is people, are people, uh, you know, blowing up Dallas Keuchel's phone saying, hey, opt out because you got a spot with us. If the Twins aren't giving him a roster spot. And I suppose if... Hmm.
Irrelevant, yeah, well, nothing's really happening in the chat right now, Rex, so. So it looks like, uh, looks like you got your, your JV news in. It piqued my interest enough, Rex, or are you talking about, there's Bryce Thornton, Bart with letter B, or did it pique my interest with maybe a Q? There's Mackay Ash and Lankford's 250. It's with letter, or it piqued my interest like a mountain peak? I mean, he must be getting paid right now, right? At least on a minor league deal. I don't think he's opting out of that. I guess unless someone is knocking me down the door. It's Caleb Love, John with the letter C. That's for John. Final box of the first case, and we've got another case coming up. The Dodgers already played today, ladies and gentlemen. They lost to they lost to the Orioles. So I guess I got Chelsea and Wrexham on in the background. That's that's Rex's favorite club. Rex, is your favorite club Wrexham? Well, let's see what's going on in the baseball world here. There you go, that does sound like a Cubs thing to do. Sign, sign Dallas Keuchel. Call him up and say, "Hey, we'll 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 sign to a major league deal." We got Cody Thomas hit a two-run homer for the A's. They beat the Red Sox six to five. Chaz McCormick's two-run shot pads the Astros' lead. They beat the Rockies four to one in Colorado. Nolan, Go uh, Nolan Gorman hit a homer today. Cardinals beat the Marlins six to four. Jonah Himes 14th homer pads the Rangers' lead five to one. They used pads the same. The ESPN used pads the same time. I guess that's they fired a lot of people, right? I guess it'd be the maybe the AI is running the headlines there. Uh, Gunnar Henderson gets his first career home run off a lefty. Dodgers beat, or Orioles beat my Dodgers eight to five. Pirates score five runs in the seventh to take the lead. They beat the Guardians seven to five. And then all the games are in, the rest of the games are in progress. Bottom of the fourth, Tigers leading the Royals one nothing. Nationals and Cubs are tied at one at the bottom of the third. Bottom of the seventh, Diamondbacks are leading the Braves. And we'll go through some more scores after. See you, Michael. I'll see you tomorrow. Wow, that's that's depressing, Rex. Rex is watching a compilation of pitchers' arms getting blown out during games. Translation, I want to watch a, an athlete's worst moments and give me a compilation of that. The, probably the lowest moments of their lives in their professional careers, and that's what I want to watch a compilation of. Travis with the letter J. Also get the Jarace Walker. To 150, Hannah Cavinder going to H. John. 
Julian Phillips will go to Jay, that's for Travis. And the Jerry Swapper. Oh, and a Victor Wembanyama refractor. That's the sort of stuff we want to see here. Nathan, maybe some ink in the next case. And there's Malik Renault for John in the letter M. It was suggested to you through the YouTube algorithm. So, the, so what else are you watching, Rex? Uh, car crashes where people die. Motorcycle accidents. Train wrecks. The algorithm is based on your search results and what you're watching anyway, Rex. Watch something happy. Go look up like pug puppies or something like that. Look up a grumble of pugs, you know? Watch stuff like that. You know, why not watch a, uh, why not watch uh, that otter in California that's stealing surfboards? And there's Keyshawn Bartholomew, that's gonna to go to Adam in the letter K. You watch baseball stuff, but the algorithm is, <laughs> you watch like baseball injury stuff. Buster Posey getting his ankle destroyed. You know, like, watch enough of that stuff, Rex, and it's gonna be like, hey, we, we suggest pitchers in the darkest moments of their careers. Oh, hey, oh, Scott's got gotcha. you. Rex is the Cubs fan. That's why he suggested, uh, that's why he was uh, told by the algorithm, look at train wrecks. No, Scoot is uh, Scott E, Scott Eckert. So where did I leave off? I don't know where I left off. Diamondbacks are leading the Braves 4-2 to two in the bottom of the 7th. Reds are leading the Giants in the bottom of the 8th in Cincinnati 3-2. to two. Mets are beating the White Sox 5-1, middle of the 8th, going to the bottom of the 8th. Padres at Blue Jays. Padres currently shutting out the Blue Jays 2-0. Angels, I guess I could watch the Yankees. Angels? That's on local television here. Yan Angels are leading the Yankees 6-2 to two in the bottom of the 6th. And the Brew Crew are in Philadelphia. They're leading by a run four to three. As interesting as this Chelsea Wrexham game is, I may have to flip over to that Angels Yankees game. That's true, Rex. You did get to see a World Series win as a Cubs fan. Over under or I guess, what's the number of uh, World Series appearances that the Cubs will make in the next 10 seasons? Number of World Series appearances by the Cubs in the next 10 seasons. Thank <clears throat> you. 
Excuse me. I didn't set a line. I'm just just want people's guess. Absolute says zero. There's Nick Smith Jr. die cut. So this is a fresh case, ladies and gentlemen. So all things are possible here. Timmy Allen, Aqua Lava to 199. And the autograph is Chris Murray, uh, Keegan's twin brother. That's gonna go to Adam in the letter K. That's a nice one. Here's Race Thompson. That's gonna be out of 10, six out of 10 for John in the letter R. A.D. Johnson also going to add him in the letter K. Ron Santo never played in a postseason game? How many Hall, how many, and here's Kiki Rice also going to add him. How many Hall of Fame players do you think has gone through the Cubs organization and not played a playoff game? I feel like there's a lot. Or maybe just played, not played in very many. How many of oh, this? Okay, we'll revise the question. How many, how many postseasons will the Cubs reach in the next 10 seasons? That number's got to be more than zero. There's, with the increased opportunities to get into like, I guess the the, the play-in games or whatever they're calling them nowadays. In the next 10 seasons? You get two or three. I think this this also comes from a, a number of my Cubs fans friends. I don't think there's you know that kind of success will not happen until there's a change in ownership. You were looking up players because I saw someone saying Trout was overrated because he has only played in one postseason game. It's unfortunate, but I think baseball's not in not exactly like basketball or even like quarterbacks for football where there's where like just stats won't do it like you have to have championships like a big part of your resume baseball's a little more looser on that it's just hard to win a world series it's not easy it's cam whitmore die cut for the letter c uh, that will be for John. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Scott, on that. Uh, Scott, what are, speaking of the, your Mets, what are the Mets going to do? Are they going to be buyers? Are they sellers? Here, oh, here's the autograph of Mari Bailey. John with letter A. It's uh, Mini Diamonds, Dewan Harris to 199. And a Caitlin Clark. Caitlin will go to John, and Dewan will also go to John.
And we've got Leaky Black for the letter L. That's for Nathan and the L-N combo. Rex thinks, predictably, as a Cubs fan, Rex thinks that they have a chance to make maybe one more World Series appearance in the next decade. They've got a farm system that rivals that old 2014 farm system. To keep those players and bring them up in the next couple of years could be like 15, 16 over again. And then it would be a shame because then they, then the ownership won't want to pay those guys. We'll nickel and dime them, and then. Scott think, doesn't think Steve Cohen allows a full-on sale. More likely it's going to be some retooling and shedding some older players to actual contenders. Have a great evening. Okay. All right. See you, Evan. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Um, yeah, I mean, let's, let's, I guess let me take a look at the, take a glance at the Mets depth chart here. I feel like you can't really do much with the... The offense is, at least on paper, is pretty solid. Maybe there can be some upgrades here and there, but... I don't know, what would I do? I don't know. Uh, I don't know who the Mets have pitching wise. Yeah, it's pitching issues and a bad bullpen. It, I don't know who the Mets have in the pipeline, though. I, I would. I would almost be inclined to trade everybody not named Kodai Senga. Trade Max Scherzer. Trade Justin Verlander. Trade Carlos Carrasco. Trade Jose Quintana. You know. Get whatever you can for, for those starters. Yeah, but there's no pitchers hive in the pipeline. Okay. So I was going to say, and start, start calling up the Mets edition of like Bobby Miller or something like that. But dump all those guys. I'm sure contending teams, listen, Dodgers could use two of those. Dodgers would love to add Carrasco and Quintana t to their rotation just to eat up innings. You know, and with with not a not a huge, I mean, with Shane Bieber going on the IL, and with you know Giolito probably commanding a high price, and Stroman has an opt out, so I mean, he, they're they're not going to you know they're, they're essentially rentals. But I would just get whatever you could for that, and then just completely retool the. Um, completely retool that rotation next year. Offense has got to be fine. You know, but if they can retool that rotation next year and then replenish a farm system. Jackson Kohler to 99. I mean, I'm not saying get rid of those guys and just get a bucket of baseballs. Like make real trades for Scherzer and or Verlander and or Carrasco and or Quintana and go from there. But not that they have to, but if they're getting good offers, why not? We've got Keyshawn Bartholomew. Letter K, Adam. Mets top prospect, another catcher. Will likely just be trade bait later. Yeah, I mean, Francisco Alvarez has that spot for hopefully the next 10, 15 years, right? Ideally. Tricky though, with the uh, 
with the sort of the expanded wild card situation here, a lot more teams think they're they're in it a little bit longer. I suppose this weekend, I mean, would have to be sort of the last, no, actually deadline's August 1st, so next weekend. So the next week and a half or so, I think are gonna be crucial for teams to see if they're buyers or sellers. But I think by the 28th or the 29th, you know, or maybe that would late that week, 27th, 28th, 29th, around there. If teams aren't looking, if the teams are, aren't looking good, they're gonna be buyers. They're gonna be making deals over the weekend. And if they're playing well, you know, maybe suddenly you're on the cusp and you're suddenly a seller or a buyer, that is. I don't know, Met, Mets are currently seven and a half back. I mean, what happens if they just have, what, today's Wednesday the 19th? I mean, it's, that team's good, on paper, that team's good enough to go like seven and three in the next 10 days. You know, coupled with some losses here and there from some wild card teams ahead of them. All of a sudden, what if you're two games out of a wild card spot going into the trade, the weekend before the trade deadline? It'd be interesting. What's up, Phil? I think the Dodgers, I mean, I feel like they have to, right? There's no way they stand pat. I'd be shocked if they stand pat. I'm not saying a blockbuster deal is gonna happen, but they've gotta make some moves. Especially on the pitching side of things. I know the Dodgers also want um, a right-handed bat, but I, I think that's a luxury at this point, especially with all the pitching issues. Julio Urias with a not a, a very good start today. Ooh, nice Brandon Miller autograph. Bartholomew with the letter B. Nice. I think he's gonna be pretty good. And a Kalen Clark refractor, it's also nice. John with the letter C. But Kershaw's on the IL, the longer than, than, than we thought that would be. You know, Bobby Miller's day to day, Emmett Sheehan, Bobby Miller and Emmett Sheehan just young. You know, you just gotta think about, I mean, Dodgers aren't thinking about playoffs. They're getting to the playoffs. They're thinking about the playoffs. Are you, who are we rolling out there? Who are the Dodgers rolling out there in a playoff series against like the Braves? I mean, Kershaw's on the older side, so he could have a tricky back issue or an arm issue or something weird like that in the playoffs. Are you counting on Bobby Miller, Emmett Sheehan to go against, you know, the, the top bats in the Braves organization? Julio Urias, I don't know what, which Julio Urias you're gonna get. Ooh, nice, another nice one. Cam Whitmore, letter C, John. Tony Gonsolin's just not 2022 Tony Gonsolin. I mean, he's about where we thought he would generally be, kind of the middle of the rotation kind of guy, but the top guys? There's Cam Whitmore die cut. Who would the, what would the Dodgers have to give up for Scherzer? I don't think they're gonna go after Max Scherzer again. Ooh, wow, we had a super in the first case and another super in the second case. Now Dodgers don't have Kimbrell anymore, Rex. So even if they wanted to roll him out as a starter, that would be impossible. Hunter Couture, letter H, John Jackson. And actually, this super fractor is actually cut a little bit thicker than its other than the other cards. 
There you go, John Jackson, letter H. Another super. Is he is he drafted or is he a pick for next year? No, it looks like he's gonna play another year at Virginia Tech. So hopefully he'll be he'll have a great season, and we'll uh, will be a high draft pick next year. So there you go, John. All aboard the Big Hit Express. I think Bueller has the potential to return playoffs. He he wants to, but I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, first off, the Dodgers have, probably have no interest in rushing Walker Bueller back, no matter what he says. And even I mean, I think at at the earliest he would be ready to throw in late August, or I mean, they would have. You would essentially have to build up arm strength in September. I don't know. If he, if he looks good enough, might be he won't be a starter, though, I don't think. His arm won't be stretched out enough for starters innings. But if he's looking good, they, they may do they may do a couple, you know, he could be like a, a reliever here and there, back into the rotation guy. But I, still, I don't think they'll risk it, though. I think they'll just be like, listen. Spend the off season, get go into the off season healthy, and get ready for spring. Do the Dodgers have any other pitchers higher up in their pipeline? That's also a good question. I don't think so. I think the the, the pitchers that were, I mean, they're already kind of digging deep already. Because looking at MLB.com's prospect rankings, they already had Gavin Stone make starts, you know, and mixed results. Number six is Emmett Sheehan. They already have him called up. Tapio has mixed results. He might still be working his way back from some sort of oblique injury. Um, I guess River Ryan, a right-handed pitcher who's in double A, he's 24 years old. I mean, I guess he could get worked in there. Maddox Bruns is only in high A. I don't think they're going to call him. I landed Knack, I suppose. They haven't called him up yet. I think, I mean, he might be the next person that gets a shot. I think Bobby Miller and, and Emmett Sheehan have been gobbling up enough innings. And Michael Grove had a decent start the other day. Michael Grove is throwing a cutter now. He just picked up a cutter, and that last couple starts have been really effective, so... If, if that turns his season around, that would be kind of awesome. I do feel the Dodgers will get Stroman, Rex is saying. Who do you see them trading for? Stroman's difficult. I mean, whether it's the Dodgers or not, Rex, I, I don't know if you could expect much back from Stroman if he gets traded because he's got an opt-out. I think teams are worried about that. You're not going to give up too much for a two-month rental. There's Ryan Nemhard for the letter R. That's going to be for John. And Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, Dustin May, I think, is done. I think they were trying to... If I put... Uh, if, if I'm Joe Jaspi, MD... Remember, I'm not a real doctor. It's not medical advice. I think they were putting... Uh, some sort of platelet-rich plasma, blood, essentially, in their uh, in his arm, trying to see if that could stimulate some uh, some recovery in that elbow. And so they want they did that and kind of want to try to let it heal on its own. And want to give that a month or two, but they did, and I don't think it took. And so I think it might be another surgery in store for him. Marcus Sasser to 75 for John in the letter M. I 
Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's the PRP, right. right. There's Caleb Love. We love it. Goes to John Jackson. There's Caitlin Clark. Nice. She's fired up. Could go after Giolito or Jordan Montgomery. Or maybe some Jack Flaherty rumblings as well. There's Zach Eady. He's supposed to be another kind of top of the first round kind of pick. It's going to go to Z, Nathan. That's a 250. Another Brandon Miller. Yeah, what is, uh, I think the Dodgers front office... is okay with rentals, but you know, what they offer will be commensurate with what a rental will get. Three boxes to go. So like, for example, if we take the Marcus Stroman example for the Cubs, I mean, you know, I'm looking at the Dodgers top, whatever, 30 prospect list. I don't think they're gonna get anyone on this list. Not for a rental. I wouldn't mind jacking the rotation either. Or g -Lid, both. Bring those, uh, I think they both played, to, played with each other in high school, right here in LA? Harvard Westlake, I think. Jan Wallace, what's up? Joe, if Otani wanted, wanted to be traded to the Dodgers, can the owner of the Angels stop that from happening? Yes. <laughs> the owner says no, and that's it. Just to any player under contract, if they want to trade, doesn't doesn't mean they're getting it. It's not up to them. We got Tyrese Proctor for the letter T. Ashlyn Watkins. 250 for John and the letter A. Simon has the letter T. And our autograph is Hansel Emmanuel, six out of 25. Nice speckle autograph. Letter H, that will be for John. Yeah, the worst thing that happened to the Angels in the offseason was Moreno's, Artie Moreno saying that, uh, that he was not going to sell the team. We have a couple Angels fans here, and they were definitely disappointed. I mean, Artie Moreno did did elevate the Angels from their previous ownership. You know, and he's done a lot of great things for the organization, but I think he's kind of reached his, his, I guess, potential, his cap, his, his ceiling as, as an owner. You know, to the point where in the last five to 10 years, it's almost, 
He's, just, he's almost been a detriment to the team. Here's Mat Matis Bazelis. Not really investing in scouts or front office or analytics infrastructure. You know, paying the wrong players. I mean, I think guys like, I think guys like Albert Pujols and Anthony Rendon and Josh Hamilton were like ownership calls. It wasn't like GM calls. So he's undermining GMs, messing up their budgets by signing these guys. Hasn't really been best for the fans either. I mean, I think his, his insistence that he wants to compete against the Los Angeles market instead of really leaning into, like Orange County is a different world. You think people from Orange County want to be associated with LA? No. He could really lean into that Orange County market, but he hasn't. I, I want to say that, this might have been resolved, but I want to say that you know, he doesn't have a Spanish language radio broadcast for Angels games, which is crazy considering Southern California and the demographics of Southern California, even in Orange County. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of missteps. Wow. Now that's an interesting take, Grizzlebees. Moreno will trade Otani to any team that will take Anthony Rendon. Right, you want Otani this bad? Guess what, we'll give you a deal on Otani, but you're gonna have to take Anthony Rendon. Right, imagine all the... Imagine, yeah, imagine the money that they're saving. You know, I don't know how much, you know, you're not gonna get a big prospect haul for but you'll get something back for Otani. You get Anthony Rendon off the books. Free up a lot of payroll. And you rebuild that team in the offseason. There's Makai Ash and Lankford to 50. <laughs> or you try to re-sign Otani. Somehow Artie Moreno got Mike Trout to stay in Anaheim. Which now, now, back then I thought, oh yeah, what a brilliant move. But as the years have gone on, I'm wondering, what's the what's the commitment level to winning? That Mike does Mike Trout have the same commitment to winning that say Otani has? Otani has made it clear in the press, I want to win. I don't think I've heard similar comments from Mike Trout. Maybe he's just happy with. Here's another Kiki Rice for Adam and the letter K. I mean, that question has to be asked at some point of Mike Trout. Especially if Otani leaves um, the Angels in the offseason as free agent. How much do you care about winning, Mike? So we got a refractor Victor Wembanyama Nathan, and we got another base Victor Wembanyama. And here's Gigi Jackson to uh, 250 for the letter G, Travis. Was that a Yankees rumor that they would take on Anthony Rendon? Yeah, the problem is not yet. Not too many people can do that. Mets, Dodgers, Yankees. Still a risk though, right? What if Otani still walks in free agency um, and you're stuck with Anthony Rendon? <laughs> Here's Hansel Emanuel for letter H, John Jackson. Yeah, Giants could be in on the Otani mix. I mean, I feel like in the off season, it, when, I don't know, I. Is Otani getting, I guess that's the big question everyone's talking about, right? Is he gonna actually get traded? I'm leaning no. I feel like that deal probably doesn't happen. 
And even if he does get traded, he's still hitting unrestricted free agency. I feel like every single team is putting a phone call into Otani's agent, who is... Anyone know? I'm looking it up right now. Who is represented by CAA? Well, not quite as scary as Scott Boris, but I mean, everyone's putting in a call to Nez Bolello of CAA Sports, which is uh, not too far away from us here. Scott Boris's office not too far away from us. I think Scott Boris's office is probably 45 minutes south at Orange County. And then CAA's in Century City. I think where LACC is. It's probably about another 30, 40 minutes north of us here. Yeah, I feel like all 30 teams have to be putting in a phone call to Otani. You gotta kick the tires. And who knows if Otani's attitude has changed towards, towards non-West Coast teams. I think initially when he came out here, I think that was a, that was more of a factor. Has that, has that changed? Except the A, maybe the A's do it, Scott. What if the A's shock the world and get Otani? A's are like, listen, we'll give you a 15 year deal. You're gonna open up this brand new stadium. We're actually gonna pump some money into this team now that we're out of Oakland. It's from the owner's perspective, right? You know, owner, new, owners of new teams like the Vegas Golden Knights like to, like to deliver championships within the first X amount of years of their existence, you know, to start building the groundwork of, of a fan base. Yeah, that owner talking to, right? John, John Fisher, I think. He's not doing it. But if you're the A's GM, let's say I was the A's GM, I would still put in the call. I'd be like, hey, here's Joe Jaspi, general manager of the Oakland Athletics. Here's, here's my pitch, here's Malik Renault for the letter M. We can't pay you that much. But we're not gonna pay you that much. But we've got a new stadium and a scrappy team here. You know, we'd love for you to be an A. Just until the stadium opens and then you can leave after that. The contract would just be through the first year of the stadium opening. Here's a Haley Cavinder to 250. That's gonna go to H. John Jackson, another Victor Omanyama. Did they get, did they release that Japanese picture today? The A's Japanese picture? They're like, listen, sorry current Japanese picture, we're looking for a better Japanese picture. All right, look, look at that. Believe it or not, we are done, boys and girls. The last auto is Duran Holmes from Dayton. That'll go to D. John Jackson with that one. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our two-case break of Bowman University Best Basketball. Random letter break number three. Thanks, everybody, for getting in. Here is a quick little recap. So Victor Wembanyama refractors and a lot of base cards, but no ink. We did have some one-of-ones, though. Some supers are always cool to see. Some Kalen Clark refractors. 
die cuts, another refractor one, Binyama. It's got Red Tiger Campbell to 10. Some nice color on some of these autos too. And there's the other, Nick Smith Jr., the other super factor from the first case. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. Thanks for keeping me in company through this long break. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.